Welcome everybody to the 2021 Arizona Open. And we start with an avoidable hinder. My name's Tim Baghurst. Joining me for this final is Sandy Rios. We're at Arizona State University in Tempe, Arizona. This is the final, one versus two. Paola Longoria against Maria Jose Vargas. Sandy, one versus two. It's what the paper said should happen, and here we are. And here we are. And we've seen them both play some of the best racquetball we've seen out of both of them this weekend. Longoria was technically perfect in her last two matches. Very, very few faults. In her semifinal, Vargas was also on spot. Her serves were great, and she missed very, very few shots. So. Yeah, the best I've seen Vargas play in a long time, but Longoria has been in spectacular form this weekend. And there's a, a great example. Smooth a backhand cross court, two bounces at a point. Yes, and, and we all know Vargas has more power, but uh, Longoria is so accurate. Ooh, close. We have line judges available for this match. Longoria could appeal. Longoria, 29-1 and one record against Vargas. Vargas has only won the one time, and that was in Virginia in 2019. I was there calling that match, and how did Vargas win? Serve execution. Created the opportunities, put them away, short rallies. Longoria has rolled ever since. Well, if she continues like she did the last two days, it's, Vargas is going to have to play error free. And so far, it's Longoria who's continuing where she's been over the last several days, just dominating opponents. We've seen some very, very low scores against her this weekend. That's a smart shot. That's a better shot from Vargas. And one big difference with Longoria, her serving has been amazing. On point. Just amazing. Now, that's not to say uh, Vargas hasn't had some great serving on her own. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. Appreciate everybody sharing the stream. So we should spread racquetball around social media. Vargas trying to rectify an outcome at the U.S. Open where Longoria beat her in the final comfortably. But she has to execute better than that. Skip ball, three serving one. frustration from Vargas. She knows she cannot make those kind of errors. You'll see Varga, uh, Longoria move around the service box for her drive serve. You'll see her move over to the right and then come back to the middle trying to find that sweet spot against the opponent. An outstanding lob serve. And aggressive. That was hard. That was a that was a low percentage shot for most of us. Longoria, she's feeling confident. She's playing confident. And right now she's in control early in game one. Yes. Got a replay coming up. Vargas doesn't hear the call, doesn't like the call. Yeah. I'd like to see them play through that. There was such a, a small bump that they should have played through that. But 
she asked for it. The referee rewarded her that, so we do have the replay. That's a nice shot from Vargas. Little punch on the backhand side into the front, the front wall. Just enough. Okay, but here's the key. Can she execute the serve? Can she gain the advantage when she's in the service box? I'd like to see that Z that she's been using all weekend. Well, she tried it earlier and it was short. That looked like a big... Screen serve. Late call. Yeah. Well, they can't, I don't think they can hear. They can't hear the referee on the speaker. And so Longoria is just asking Acosta, you know, bang on the glass so that we can hear what, when to stop. Skip Vargas. You can see Vargas is getting a little frustrated. Carlos Cuadri over to our right, looking on. And, and Vargas is an aggressive shooter, so it's not surprising she would take it, but she's gonna have to play smarter than that. Not quite Longoria. We saw Longoria hitting some outstanding pinches, forehand pinches yesterday, especially against Martinez. Vargas hitting down the lines on the forehand side. There's that. Sh There's that short Z that you talked about, but it wasn't as good as it has been. No, it was not. And Longoria didn't have to do much with it. have an appeal. I think Vargas wants a replay. She's not going to get one. One line judge agrees and one disagrees. Players have three appeals, three lost appeals per game. And that was the first for Vargas. by Longoria, but Marcus really put it exactly where Longoria expected it and she was able to put it down. We have a timeout on the court taken by taken by Vargas. Well, how did these two players get here? Longoria defeated Erica Mania 15-0, 15-1. Really a statement win there. She was tested against Ronda Rasic, though. Rasic with two game points in the first game. Couldn't close it out. And then Longoria pulled away for a 15-14, 15-9 win. Martinez was up last night. And we didn't know what to expect because Martinez can beat anybody and has beaten Longoria. But Longoria pushed Martinez all over the court last night. You can't question the effort from Martinez but a, a, a six and five win was fairly convincing. Vargas defeated Andrea Perez Picon in the first round. She didn't get a bye in the first round, so she won four and two. Then took out Maria Renee Rodriguez, 10 and two. Jessica Parilla was the person who seemed to maybe cause the splash upset in this division. Had five, I repeat, five match points in game two. Didn't take advantage. Vargas advanced 12, 15, 15, 14, 11, 4. And then took out Herrera last night playing excellent 10 and 6. Okay. 
Second serve. get a replay Vargas doesn't like it well but it's the right call yes the ball was clearly gettable you have to give Longoria the benefit of the doubt and she was there well so far Longoria in a cruise control six serving one I mentioned the shifting of her serve position and she moved a little over to the right Got the loose return from Vargas, and three-shot rally once again. Well, you can just see the confidence. Lemongoria doesn't even, she's not missing a step. She's not missing a shot. It's a better backhand, taking a little pace off of the ball. I but 1-7, you got it. Yeah. Okay, reset. Right? You've taken your time out. Reset. Let's focus on this serve. Very short. And Marcus has got to get a serve in. She's got to get a good serve in. There's a three-shot rally for Vargas. We talked about this against Jessica Paria, against Maria Re Renee Rodriguez. Vargas's Z-serve to the left side has been outstanding. It was Paria who started cutting it off, and you saw Longoria did so there. I like the no call from Longoria. You see her face when she walks back. Not happy with the call. Yeah, there's going to be contact, and she can play through that. I don't think it hampered, uh, hampered her that much. You know, she needs to throw it away. She's playing so well. That's a minor little thing for her that she's going to have to let it go. And there she does. Vargas not happy because the line judges overruled the point and it was a replay. And I think that affected her serve. It was loose, Longoria. Crisp forehand down the right side, side out. And a rare loose serve from Longoria. She has not done that often that's a rare one she's been serving so point on leaning back on that forehand she had the opportunity maria jose vargas didn't put it away you have to execute those against a world number one well and maybe just going for too much pressure's there right you've got to execute against somebody so consistent Good backhand. Very good. And you see the aggressiveness of Vargas. She's not going to let that do what it, you know, do anything in the back corner. She's going to keep it from hitting the back corner. Longoria wants a skip serve. I don't think so. I don't think it was either. It's not going to hurt to ask. You know. And there There's you saw the, it. Yeah, there it is. And Longoria tried to attack it early, go to the ceiling. Last time she attacked it by passing, and it was better. We'll see if this time, if Longoria goes, or excuse me, Vargas goes back to it, what will Longoria do? Skip ball forehand side. It's the forehand that's costing Vargas in game one. And she was so accurate with that yesterday. There was, it was keep it away from her forehand. She didn't miss. <laughs> I 
Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> A replay. Vargas got what she wanted. Exactly. So a replay coming up. Line judges overturn the official. Nice backhand there. Again, the backhand from Vargas has been better so far. More consistent. Definitely not as much power, well, but more accurate. That may be the reason it is more accurate. There it is again. Yes. She's stepping into that forehand, and it's a little high, but Longoria had the forehand herself and didn't put it away. Well, and if Vargas can get some good backhands, it may actually give a little more confidence for that forehand. But it was 7-1, now it's 7-4. Good run from Vargas. Seems to have settled down now in this first game. And she's serving better. That's the key. Longoria very far over to the right side. And that's, I was going to say look for the jam. I just see her when she steps over there, she's going to try and hit that jam. And she did, and she hit a very good one on top of it. Well, Vargas, it looked like she was trying to hit a forehand when a backhand might have been a better shot selection. But it's a split decision. Point for Longoria. Likely Nick Lobb to the left side. Oh no, change up. Well, maybe she thought that that Vargas uh, forehand was not going to be there. That time it was. Well, the difference I think with that one is Vargas instinctual, right? Plenty of time to prepare that, knows what she's going to do. Not sure what she's doing. Looking at her coach. So Vargas takes her second and final timeout early in game one. It's four serving eight, and you can see her coming off the court and having a conversation with Carlos Quadri and also Carlos Keller. Vargas representing Argentina, but originally from Bolivia, so some Bolivian contingent down there providing some support. And then further down, Longoria, supported by her parents, further down. And I would be willing to bet we are in contact with Fran Davis on the phone at some point in the Longoria camp. Especially if things start to get tight. Yes, as it is right now, she's fairly comfortable. She's playing confidently. She's playing accurately. Her serves have been very good. So there's not a whole lot of reason for you know Fran to say anything more than keep doing what you're doing. Well, we've had a, a wonderful weekend here in Tempe, Arizona. So many matches across all these courts. And, of course, the fun one has been Mixed Pro. And we'll have the pro final later. It'll be on the IRT stream. But what a fun one that will be. Longoria will be in action with Landa against Michelle and Daniel De La Rosa. Too close to call. It is. And, you know, they're seeding it. You know, we talked about it yesterday. It, it is what it is. The De La Rosa's the received ten seed. 11. 11. 11, right, yeah. Landa and Longoria, the number one seeds. But De La Rosa's never, I, they don't worry about seed. Yeah, they don't, it doesn't matter. They just play. All right, back to the action. Here we go. It's 4-8. Clean backhand winner from Vargas again. Five serving eight. Vargas getting more and more confident as this match progresses. You can see her, even her backhand, which was started off well, is getting better. That time skips it when she could and should have done better. And she's getting a little animated, which actually gets her more focused into a game, so. Well, she can also get too animated. She has to find that right sweet spot. Longoria moved back over to the middle for her serve. 
And it's an ace serve. Vargas looks back to her bench for clarification. Perfect, perfect serve from Paola Longoria. Another excellent serve. There's the error from Vargas. She has to play clean. Longoria skips very, very rarely. Well, and if you're serving like Longoria, it just gives you more confidence. You just serve better and better. tough that's tough it is tough but it is so Vargas's shot she does that commonly that from the shoulder kill shot on the forehand side I'm, I'm not Jay, I'm not watching Do we have the Get ball, Longoria. She thought it might be good. Well, it kind of popped out of the back wall, which kind of caught her off. Nice shot, Longoria. And you can hear her emotion. And then you see Vargas slapping her thigh in frustration. Well, you saw Longoria just stay calm. She knew she had Vargas out of position, just waited for her to move so she could make the accurate swing. Excellent backhand. The serve wasn't bad, but it was too close to Vargas. She had to just take one step, got a full swing, got a full view. Two bounces well, over to the right side. It wasn't as close to the short line as the others had been. It, it was a little deeper. There's that Z serve. Longoria let it come to the back wall and paid the price. She went up off the back wall. A loose return. Three shot rally. Vargas put it away. I, th I think when Vargas gets that serve going, you've got to cut that off. You cannot let it Z. Agree, 100%. It has to be a replay at best. Vargas wants a point. Longoria wants the avoidable hinder. <laughs> Neither one of them is going to be happy. And so guess what? The solution is a replay, which I think is the right call. I think, are they yeah. both appealing? <laughs> okay, it's going to be a replay. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> both both appealing for two different things. <laughs> well. Guess what? The middle was the win. It's a replay. Vargas trying to go short on that serve. When she gets that serve in, it's almost unreturnable. Cambio, says our official Acosta. Vargas doesn't like it. I have to agree, Sandy. I agree. She did everything she could to get out of the way, and it, it was like Longoria took a path that would take her into collision with Vargas. So that's defined as blocking. Right. And we talked about that yesterday in one of, the, one of the matches where, you know, it wasn't like Var uh, Longoria was deliberately trying to run in a different direction to where she would want to hit. It was, I'm running to hit where I'm supposed to hit this. Right, she wanted to take a more, a wider path and then step into the ball. And Vargas was where she wanted to go, so. A serve cracked on the left side. Point for Longoria. Eleven serving seven. 
12, serving seven. Ooh. Short serve called. Longoria will appeal. Both line judges overrule, and it's a point. Looks I thought it was good. Yeah, me too. Vargas is out of appeals. Replay. Good call. Yeah. She she gave it to Longoria earlier. She's got to give that same thing to Vargas. Where did? There's just some confusion. There was just some questions about the score in terms of when Longoria served the crack ace, it was overruled, right? It was called short, but overruled as good. Right. And the question was, is that then a, a replay? Or is that a replay or is it a point? Well, the question was because she had stopped play, was it gettable? But the answer was no, it had cracked out. So it wasn't gettable. So it then became a point. Oh no. No. Oh my goodness. That's oh, that's a no. that's a generous call and I don't think Vargas she has no appeals. I don't think she has appeals remaining. She was clearly up <laughs> and out of the way. And you see Marcus closing the door so the conversation cannot continue. Well, what, what Longoria is asking is, does she have any appeals left? If she doesn't, if Vargas does appeal, it is a technical delay of game. You're wasting time. And guess what? I think Longoria knows these rules. Right. However, if our ref does not have it written on our scorecard, we can't verify it. High drama here, Sandy. Well, we wanted a few, a little drama. This is good drama in a way. It's not too violent yet, so we'll take it as good drama. I can't quite hear. Vargas would obviously appeal that decision, and I suspect it would be overturned. But it's unclear. So it looked like she did have one appeal left. And here we go. Here we go. It's okay. 12, serving seven. And it's a replay. Goria goes right 
It wasn't perfect, but good enough because Vargas had gotten out of position to go front left. Yes, she was looking for that pinch and it didn't happen. Oh. An excellent cross court there by Longoria. Game point number one for the world number one. Short serve. Luckily for Vargas, that was a good serve. Short of it being half an inch short. And just like that, I, it, that that referee discussion really took the air out of Vargas. You felt Sandy Rios, it benefited Longoria because Longoria went in. Yeah, okay, Vargas got the replay, but Longoria went in and just won every rally since. Well, she doesn't let those things bother. She knew, okay, it, I didn't get what I wanted. There was a discussion. I'm still serving. It doesn't matter. I still have the ball. I am still in control of the points. She continued with her serves. Her serves are still spot on. Vargas didn't have a shot on any, and game over. Okay, that's game one in the books. It goes to the world number one. Vargas has work to do. We'll see if she re can regroup right after this. And we're back, everybody. Tim Baghurst and Sandy Rios ready to start game number two. Somebody hit the court mic down there. Did it fall? There's... Just off your screen, there's something on the back of the court that they're just trying to to look at to fix something. Just a little delay, once again adding a little drama to this match. And it's turned into a really interesting one. We know that Longoria has, you know, defeated Vargas every time bar one. Right. But Vargas has won, and she's pushed... Longoria more than once. Last time at the U.S. Open, it wasn't close. This one is a little more competitive. Vargas, though, has to up her game. She, she's got to get her serves in. She can't have these loose serves. She's got to not make her errors. She's got to hit the ball cleanly. I, I saw her in the first game with that backhand. It was on, but she kept going cross court, and Longoria was there every time. Wow. Excellent rally. 
Nobody's going to question the effort of these two, but Longoria pushing Vargas to the four corners of this court. Vargas definitely putting in a lot of work. Longoria, though, in the service box once again. Well, Vargas had her shot. I mean, she was on defense the whole time. And then a skip forehand side. It's been the, the iffy shot from Vargas in this match so far. Well, it's, it's the tendency when someone's playing so well, you think you've got to roll everything out and you're going for too much. And she needs to just bring it up an inch, two inches. It's clean hitting from Longoria. Not, there's a great example. It wasn't a kill shot, but it was good enough. Yes, and it, it was set up by that serve. Vargas, all she could do to return that serve gave Longoria the setup, and she did just enough she needed to do. That's better from Vargas. Much better, but you also saw the serve from Longoria. It came off the back wall, allowed Vargas to get a decent wrap. Longoria didn't put it down, Vargas did. And there's the Z, but that one's short. And Longoria was able to get a good shot on it. Didn't have to hit it hard, though. Just passed Vargas, didn't come off the back wall. Three serving zero. Short serve called. And, and you see, Longoria is not going to question it. She would have taken that. She's comfortably in the lead. She's playing well. Why waste it? Right. Why get out of the zone that you're playing in? Great hustle from Longoria. She had her chances time and time again. The Argentine Longoria this time covering a lot of court. Vargas didn't put away her chances. We saw Vargas attack. She needed a little more patience on some of those shots, just waiting for the ball to come down where she could actually get a good shot on it. Just short. But there you see the serving from Longoria, just short. It's not far from being the ace. And that's what's kept her so far ahead of everybody this entire weekend. And serves not coming off the back wall either. Oh, Until that one. That I'm talking about drive serves though. Okay. Drive serves, she hits a lot of short serves. But if she gets two or three that are perfect, that's two or three points towards 15. It makes it a lot easier to get there. Well, and we all know, if you're getting aced and aced and aced, it's demoralizing. It, it takes the wind out of your sails. Again, too good from Longoria. Well, you see the, the power, the, almost the overhitting from Vargas. It's coming off the back wall again. And Longoria just has to be patient, which she's extremely good at, and wait for the shot. Mm. That might be worth an appeal. Marcus but you'd probably get just a first serve on that. And is it really worth an appeal? No, uh, she's still comfortably ahead. She's serving well. Don't worry about it. But you saw the patience of Longoria. She Five serving zero from zero. Longoria. Yeah. yeah. As soon as she wins game one. It's on, she's on a roll. Yeah. 
confidence, puts pressure on the opponent to do more. And another three-shot rally. We'll see a timeout from Vargas. No, I. this is where Vargas maybe gets in her head a little bit and forgets and is starting to just She's get just frustrated. Playing. Outstanding defense from Longoria. Now she takes the timeout, slapping her racket on her hand. Longoria cruising right now. And we'll see Longoria not leave the court. This is, this is her MO when she's comfortably ahead. Why be distracted? Why come off the court? I'm just going to keep consistently hitting the same shot again and again. So when it happens in a rally, I don't even have to think about it. The body just hits it. Well, this gives us an opportunity to remind you that we will be back on a stream next weekend in Chicago. We have back-to-back -back tournaments this month, and so it'll be fun to see how. I'm going to be very interested to see. I have a feeling we'll see some upsets next weekend because the best players here have played the most, and therefore they may be a little bit of battle fatigue so to speak can they transition that going straight into chicago starting again on friday and run through the draw again till sunday we'll see yes and i don't know you know some of these players may not be here some of our because the world championships are very quickly after that they actually start the first of uh, December so some of them may not even make it to Chicago because they're saving themselves for the world championships the adults will still continue so the opportunity for upsets in Chicago is increased with that all right here we go Longoria serving just short By the way, coming up next on this court is the final of the IRT Mercado with a couple of big wins this weekend, taking on their number one seed, Daniel De La Rosa. Swing and a miss from Vargas. She's, it's almost like she's checked out. Yes, but she read that serve. She knew it was gonna be a Z to the forehand and she stepped over and was there waiting for it. Just was, took her eye off the ball, just missed it. And a better shot from Vargas. Longoria knew where it was going, but this one didn't come off the back wall. She didn't have a chance to get it. She doesn't waste energy. I'm not going to go for it. It's one rally. Ball comes back to Vargas. We might see an appeal. She's going to appeal her own serve. No, I. I think she's appealing oh, encroach, encroachment. So one agrees and one disagrees. A shake of the head from Vargas. Loss of appeal. Sandy, since the referee discussion, Vargas hasn't won a point. No, it's been all Longoria. Chris bat forehand down the line. Two bounces perfect into the back corner. And another point. Longoria is making another statement in this match. She leads 8-0. Well, you saw on the forehand from Vargas. She hit so hard she literally pulled herself to the left side of the court. There was no way she was going to be able to really get back into position to re return the ball. Look. Ooh. Might see an appeal here. No. Checking with her parents. You have three appeals. That one might be worth it, but. Well. Like you said, she's playing where she wants to be. She's in the zone. Let's not get caught up in any drama.
No call from our official. Longoria wanted it, but then didn't because she put that ball away and yet another point. Yes, and she has literally been playing almost flawless ball. The serves are still spot on. She's not missing a setup. And I think there's a lesson here of how important a serve is in racquetball. And as you said, a short drive serve doesn't bother her. It didn't cost her anything. She's got an excellent second serve. Beautiful backhand winner, another three shot rally. And you see, even though Vargas knows on second serve, she's gonna get a drive to for her forehand. She's going to cut it off. Longoria keeps going to it because even though Vargas is cutting it off, she's not putting the ball down. Er, Longoria is still getting the winner shot off of it. To my recollection on the drive serve, we've only seen one come off the back wall. Vargas won the rally. Another outstanding serve, Sandy, and this is just routine for Longoria. Yes, and there you saw Vargas said, well, I'm not doing any good thing, cutting it off. Let me see what happens, I'll let it see. Well, you saw the result when it zed. She got an even worse return off of it. Three points away from that dreaded zero next to your score. <laughs> next to your name. That hurts, and I'm, I, I, from I, personal experience, that, that really does hurt, yeah, even at any level. Even from at personal the experience, from, Sandy. I'll admit it, <laughs> I'll admit it. Now there's a story behind it, but you know, I will admit it. Okay, Fargus, nod of her head. Vamos, she says. Let's see if she can get a point next to her name. She needs a quality serve. Oh, There's she the got skip. It. She got yeah, it. She got it. And Longoria knew she had the opportunity. Yes. And you can see she's frustrated, right? She wanted. Who doesn't want to give their opponent a zero? It makes a huge statement when you're number one to anybody. To beat the number two like that. Yes. But it shows how she seeks perfection. She wants to hit everything the right way. And that speaks volumes as to why she is number one and has been there for so long. 94% win percentage for Longoria over her career. Stunning achievement. Yes, and there you saw it. She does, you don't have to hit the ball as hard as, as you can. She just put it in the front corner. It came off just, Marcus, as quick as she is, just wasn't able to get to it. 12 serving one. Oh. That, that looked like a wet ball. I think Vargas appealed a wet ball. It looked like it, an unusual bounce. The ball did, went yeah, faster it, after it hit the wall, at uh, the flew, floor. Yeah, and it just kind of shot out. But these courts have been doing been some playing. things, especially this show court this weekend. Trece uno. Another point. Just, just oh, no, wait. It. it was called skip. Oh, <laughs> and Vargas, Vargas knows laughing. it's not. <laughs> oh, I guess and Vargas knows happen. she's going to lose this. Oh, oh, one up, one down. Well, oh, Longoria doesn't like this because Vargas, I think, knows. 
and she's asking her to make the call. And Vargas is just going, I'm just appealing and going through the rules. Whether she may have thought it was a skip, and she said, well, maybe it wasn't. So mm -hmm. what are you going to do? But I like that Longoria just, all right, get back. I'll get it back. Yes. I'm one point away, she does two points away from this match. Yes. Hesitant skip on the backhand side. It bounced awkwardly off that left wall. Another point. There's the serve and an there ace for Vargas. It's Another point or two. Longoria will take a timeout, even though she's so far ahead. Yes. Longoria wants a screen serve. She'll appeal the screen serve. I don't know. That's a 50-50, Sandy. It was, it was close, but I can see. One agrees, one disagrees. So call stands. What a get from Fargus. But Longoria maintaining composure and executing her shot. Exactly. And you saw the patience. She didn't rush that shot. She waited. She put her hand up in case Vargas didn't get it out of the way. But Vargas moved as quickly as she could. Patience took her shot. Winner. 13 serving three. Game two. Side out. And you see Vargas attacking just a little bit more. Her confidence is going up. She's got a huge hill to go up if she's going to win this game. Not to say she can't do it, but the way Longoria is going to be playing and has been, it's going to be a huge hill. It was short. That was a statement shot from Longoria. Rips the winner. Now takes her timeout. We'll take a timeout ourselves. We'll be back. Longoria leads 13-3. And we're back, everybody. Tim Bagger, Sandy Rios, enjoying this final here in Tempe, Arizona. A lot of fun it's been. The scoreline suggests that it hasn't been, but there's been a lot to talk about in this match, Sandy. Well, we've had a little bit of controversy, nothing bad, but a lot of questionable calls and appeals, appeals discussions, and referee and player discussions, and just short from Longoria. So and just behind Acosta, our official, is her parents. And so she's looking past the official to get a second and third opinion. Right. And but I think all of them agreed it was short. Yes, and you see her not getting worried 
like I said, her she's getting what she wants from that Z search. Even though Vargas knows exactly where it's gonna go, she still ends up setting her up and Longoria just sets her feet and it's down. Yeah, if you counted the number of aces and three shot rallies Longoria's had in this match, it's substantial. Here she goes, match point number one, 14-3. Went for the crack. Why not? Why not indeed? She's hit them. Z serve to the right or Nick lob to the left probably. Looks like a lob. Nope. Nope. Oh, that looks really wide. Replay coming up. Why wouldn't you do that? The last three points she's won on that exact same serve because Vargas couldn't return it. So right. why change it? Yeah, Vargas is attacking that Z serve and just got that one wrong. Quick apology from her. I don't think it was intentional. No, I think it almost actually almost looked like it came and missed it. Like yeah, it uh, yeah. So Longoria gets a first serve. And Vargas stabs her racket out. It was a great serve. Something good happened, and it was a side out. Well, it was, a, you know, a half-to-return serve. You see Vargas checking the ball, hoping that it's a broken ball so she might get first serve again. Excellent. Notice how Longoria just paused, waited, 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 and then took her shot, checking to see where Vargas was going to go and went cross court. Vargas not able to retrieve. Well, that's one of her great assets is that she is patient and she knows how to be patient. Longoria, match point. Wow, Longoria changes up the serve. Vargas caught unprepared, swing and a miss. A yes. serve on the on the lobster for match point. Well, and it was an off speed, so it came at a different speed. Vargas wasn't looking for that speed. She was actually looking for something different and got caught, and then aggressive is her style, and she went after it and just missed. Well, congratulations to Longoria. She continues to add the accolades to her resume, which is already extremely impressive. Just a reminder, mixed pro doubles will be after the men's singles, so you do want to stick around for that. Longoria will be in action again, and Michelle De La Rosa for the women. Their partners are Landa and Daniel De La Rosa, respectively. But thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll be back next week in Chicago. I want to say a big thank you to... A big thank you to our tournament directors here in Arizona, uh, Jim Winterton and Frank Tadonio. They've done an amazing job for us here. We had some awesome home-cooked food, oh, believe yeah. it or not, that was really, really good. And everything has been so smooth and done so well by them and their community. So we really do appreciate that. Well, my thanks to you, Sandy, for joining me this weekend. And, of course, TJ Bomba, the commissioner who puts in so much work as well. JTRB and J. Josie at the controls. Can't thank them enough for a great production. On behalf of myself, Tim Baghurst, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week. I'm Carla Munoz and I play with passion. I play to be a role model for the kids. I play for the adrenaline. I play for the love of the game.